Hello everyone. Today I'm going to briefly introduce the features and functions of the SWA2451 PID controller as demonstrated on the PCO200 control panel. Now this is a PID temperature controller with a timer as well, so it's super useful for applications that require both precise temperature and time control. So as you can see on our PV or process value line, it reads out HH, meaning that our sensor is, not, is either not connected or not connected properly. So I'm just going to power off and then check on my sensor. Okay, perfect. So you see the top line here, PV, is our process value, is what's reading from the sensor. And uh, your SV, or set value line, is indicating uh, your set temperature or your time when you're using the timer function. Now these light indicators on the left simply read what is on or off. So your out indicator is on when your controller is giving power to your load. And then below that is alarm one indicator. Below that is alarm two indicator. And AT is the auto tune indicator. Now holding the left arrow key for three seconds will allow you to enter manual mode, indicated by the capital H on the bottom left. And you can use the up and down arrow keys to change your power output. So you can click the left arrow key again to exit out of manual mode. This SWA has a variety of other parameters that you can set as well. So you can change these parameters by entering the settings mode. AL1 is your limit alarm setting parameter for your first temperature alarm. AL2 is your limit alarm setting parameter for your second temperature alarm. SE stands for sensor calibration for any uh, input offsets or biases on your sensor. P stands for proportional constant. I stands for integral time. D stands for derivative time. AT stands for auto-tune. It's uh, for optimizing your P, I, and D constants. So you can set it to be off or on. And on will activate your auto-tune feature. But we're just going to keep it off for now. T is cycle time, it is represented in seconds. So HY defines your hysteresis band for your main output and is constant for on-off mode only. HY1 is the hysteresis band for alarm 1, this is if you're using alarm 1 as a deviation alarm. HY2 is your hysteresis band for alarm 2, this is for if you're using your alarm 2 as a deviation alarm. DP stands for decimal point. Uh, this is for if you want to change your temperature display resolution to uh, 1 degree or 0 or 0 0.1 degrees at 1. So we're going to keep it at 0. ALP1 defines uh, your alarm 1. ALP2 defines alarm 2. And COLL or cool uh, determines if your controller is working in cooling mode or heating mode. So off means cool um, heating mode and on means it's on cooling mode. So we're gonna keep it off for now. OPPO stands for output power, and for this controller, it should always be set to zero. LOCK, or lock, allows you to lock your parameter settings so that the operator doesn't accidentally change any settings. SN is sensor. Using this parameter, the operator can tell the controller what kind of temperature probe is being used. OPA stands for output mode, and for this controller, it should also be set to zero always. DIL stands for your low limit for your set value or your set temperature. DIH stands for your uh, high, high limit for your set value or set temperature. And CF stands for your temperature display units, whether in Fahrenheit or in Celsius. Next, I will show you how to set the temperature alarms. The SWA2451 has both absolute alarms and deviation alarms. The absolute alarm is set by the specific temperatures that the alarm will be on. The deviation alarm is set by how many degrees are above or below the set temperature that the alarm will be on. Now I will use an example to show you how alarm 1 and alarm 2 works on this PID. In this example, I want to set alarm 1 to be an absolute high alarm and alarm two to be a low deviation alarm. So I need to change my SV set value to 250 degrees. 
Next, I'm gonna go into my parameter editing profile. I want to change AL1 to 250, AL2 to 10, HY1 to 5, HY2 to 5, ALP1 to 1, which will make alarm 1 a high limit alarm. ALP2 to 4, which will make alarm 2 a low deviation alarm. And as you can see, the AL1 indicator or the alarm 1 indicator will be lit when it re the temperature reaches above 250 degrees. and that the indicator is turned off when the temperature reaches below 245 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, I will demonstrate what the low deviation alarm looks like. And you can see the AL2 indicator is lit when the temperature reaches to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. and the indicator is turned off once the temperature goes above 245 degrees. So one of the unique features of this PID controller is its built-in timer function, which sets it apart from our other PID controllers. Right now, the SV is displaying temperature because the timer function is disabled. There are eight different timer modes, so I will briefly introduce how to change the different parameters. In the timer parameter editing profile, there are four parameters you can edit, TE1, TE2, UPT, and INT. TE1 and TE2 are the set value for the first and second timer. UPT is the parameter for selecting your time unit and timer counting direction. INT is your timer control function, which is one of the most important features of this parameter editing. When INT equals zero, this will disable your timer feature. When INT equals one, two, or three, the timer starts after the temperature reaches your set point. When INT equals four, five, six, or seven, the temperature controller works like an independent timer. Now I will show an example demonstrating the use of a timer. So say you have a powder coating oven that needs to heat up to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, be held for 20 minutes, and then be turned off. The parameters that we're gonna to need to change are the set value to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna hold my up arrow key and change my set point to 375. Next, I'm gonna change my ALP one to zero by going into settings. And I'm gonna change my timer control functions by going into the timer editing parameters. I'm gonna set this to 20. Set UPT to one, which will make it count down in minutes, and INT to one. Now I'm gonna turn on my heating element. So I noticed my timer function doesn't seem to be working. So I'm just gonna power off my device and check the inside just to make sure that my terminals might be wired correctly.
and now we're just going to confirm if that resolved the issue. Perfect, and it seems to be that our timer is working. So this is a pretty common error, but just you need to make sure that your terminal 11 and 12 are jumped together. All right, now my current batch is finished. I can use the alarm switch to mute it or press the reset button to start a new batch. This is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and we hope that the video helped to clarify any confusion with using the SWA2451. If you have any questions about this product or any other products, please visit our website at www.auburins.com or by emailing us at auburins at gmail.com.